in the military. We all know today that the Air Force, we, we, the, the, the papers or the investigation of the Air Force has been made public. That of the uh, Navy has been made public. But that of the Army has been swept under the carpet by this government. Because they are not only sustaining it, they are not only retaining those culprits, but they are still serving in various capacities in this government, of a government that is supposed to be fighting corruption more than any other place, or more than any other thing. <laughs> now, with this, we should also look at the irresponsibility of the political elite. The political elite in this country have done nothing but to cash in on this poverty, on this ill education of the mass majority of Nigerians. They use them, they have used you and turned your psyche into slaves, slaves of religious and ethnic manipulations. No one has ever seen the son of a governor even going out to campaign. No one has ever seen, no one has ever seen the son or the daughter of the president going out to campaign. And no son of even a counselor, not talk of a senator or a chairman or a governor that has been abducted or that has been slaughtered on the streets. But the idiots that call themselves the, mass, the masses allow themselves to be used through religion or ethnicity to divert attention, but to continue to make you into slaves that will be exploited again and again on ending. So until you put into your thick heads that you are no slaves to anybody, that the resources of Nigeria is ours, then you will continue to be enslaved. You will be where you are forever, starving. I have never seen the son of the imam being slaughtered or rioting. Neither have I ever seen the son of the pastor. I don't know the difference between a Christian child and a Muslim child. The girl child is the same. We all suffer the brunt of the problems of this society. We were all girl childs at one point or, or the other. So was our mother and her mother and her mother and mother before her. In every household today, women carry the brunt of the weight of the ills of her household because the men have abducted their responsibilities. It is left to us to keep the children going. It is the same all over. But we are not prepared to look at that reality. We are not prepared to challenge government to give us our rights. Nobody is doing us any favor. It's our country. We have permanent right over our leaders. They come and go, but dead or alive Nigerians have permanent right over their leaders. And we must always demand those rights. So I'm not here, or nobody should tell me that I'm in opposition. No, I'm not in opposition. I'm seeking my right as a Nigerian. And that is what you should be doing, and that is where your thoughts should be going. Have you gotten what is due to you? Nobody owns the resources of this country. Nobody created that oil. Nobody created the arable land. We were not even consulted when the Europeans amalgamated, amalgamated the north and the south. We were not consulted. But having found ourselves there, there's nothing we can do but to make the best out of it. Have we made the best out of it? The choice is yours. So what are the implications to the girl child? This has more than anything else promoted the preservation 
and mental poverty or illiteracy on the girl child. This insecurity tends to preserve and sustain the tradition of transgeneral, transgeneral ab abject poverty and hopelessness from mother to children and to unborn children. And the, the condemnation of the young and even immature girl into sustainable tradition of early marriage, premature motherhood, lamentable condition further complicated by their health challenges in terms of rapid breeding of VVF, infections, maternal mortality, coupled with abject poverty and illiteracy equals to a permanent catastrophe to their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, we can go on and on. However, the crux of the matter is that we don't have a nation as it is. We don't have a country because the primary responsibility of every government, that which gives legitimacy to any government, is to secure the territorial integrity of that nation and to provide security for lives and property, and to give us an enabling environment to live and to sustain our lives without hindrance, without fear of being kidnapped or being killed or being assassinated. That is the primary responsibility of any government. Any government that fails to do this lacks legitimacy to govern and lacks and, and should be said to have failed, woefully failed. It is left to Nigerians now to decide to wake up and say, have I gi been given what is duly mine? Have you received it? Or are you still parasites? Are you still slaves in your mentalities? You have to be able to think. As for our military, we are demanding a thorough overhaul of this military. Anything short of this is a kahoot. Anything short of this is to say the least, the government is a beneficiary. The people in government are benefiting. That is why they don't give a hoot that are hundreds and thousands of our people are being killed every day. Our kids are being abducted. You have to understand that in Borno alone, between, uh, I think it's, yeah, be between uh, 2013 and 2018, 1,400 school girls, 1,400 schools were destroyed by Boko Haram. 1,400 schools. 2,000 teachers were killed. 1,000 school children were abducted between 2013 and 2018. So what is this telling you? All we hear of is Chibok, but they are only a fraction. They are only a fraction. And that is why we must go beyond the struggle for them to be back, the struggle for our country to be in peace, because we have everything that it takes to develop a country. And the government has everything that it takes to revive the Chad Basin. Yes, it is doable. It has been done in many countries. China had turned desert into forest. So even Saudi Arabia did it. Why can't Nigeria? For so long as you begin to say that it's a northern issue. You all are living in the north. This is north. It's not a northern issue. For so long as you see crime within the prism of tribe or religion, you are part and parcel of the problem. Because you are perpetuating it, you are not looking for solutions. 
And what does it matter? What does it matter to the victim? Does it make any difference to the victims of Mambila, Benue, or Zamfara, on, in, under which government they were killed? The dead is dead. The orphan is orphaned. Does it matter who made it happen or who allowed it to happen? So, ladies and gentlemen, I can't say much because I did not even prepare a paper. You have to forgive me. But we all have a responsibility, not only to ourselves, but to our children. Anybody, I have said, who sits on the fence without saying anything or doing anything is either a coward or a hypocrite, or both. So the choice is yours. I'm not a coward, I'm not a hypocrite. I'm a fighter. Fight along with us. For Chibok girls, we want freedom.